be seated. Welcome to Bayview Lutheran Church. We are here today celebrating the second Sunday in Lent. We've got a couple announcements today. The first one that I want to make you aware of is that we are still having our Bible studies on Tuesday and Thursday. On Wednesday, we are going to be having our midweek Lent service at 6 o'clock. No choir this week. And then the final announcement is, as you're going out to Narthex, there is a table outside of the fellowship hall that has some art from Paula. Would encourage you to take a look at the art, make a donation, and put it in the box. You have two options for your donation. One, it could go to the victims at the Butch Bar Fire. Or two, it could go as far as to Ukraine um, relief effort to Lutheran World Federation. And if you do it that way, your donation is going to be doubled because of a generous uh, donation from a church in our city. Let us pause just for a moment and enter in to our confession and assurance. In the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us and guides us in our pilgrimage. Let us rest in a moment of silence before we confess. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again in your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under the wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God's journey with you and teaches you how to live in love. Genesis. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abraham, but Abraham said, O oh Lord God, what will you give me for a 
Before I continue childless, the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, So a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward the heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord. And the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Ch Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, he said to him Bring me a turtle dove and a young pigeon. Bring, bring me a heftier three year old, a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove and a young pigeon. He brought him all these things and cut them in two, laying the chaff over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when the, and when the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep, terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response of psalm reading today comes from Psalms 27. I will read the odd verses and I'll ask you as a congregation to read the even verses. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? from Philippians. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me, and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For, for many live, live as enemies 
enemies of the cross of Christ. Um, we have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, that it may be conformed to the body of his glory, by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, who I love and long for, with joy and crown, stand form, firm in the Lord this way, my beloved. The word of the Lord. May you rise for the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. And he said to them, Go tell that fox for me, Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you said, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. You may be seated. <coughs> I'll invite the children up front for the children's message. So in the reading that we just heard from Luke, we see this aspect of Hints being gathered in. And Jesus is telling them, this is what I want to do to you. I want to love you. I want to care for you. And Jesus did this and said this to the people that wanted to kill him. This was just like the biggest example of Jesus saying, love your enemies. Then, there was a passage that we read back in court in Psalm. It's going to be what I think we're going to look at in the children's message. And there's one word that I want you to hold on to. And that one word is fear. It says, do not fear. And we are able to not fear. Because God loves each and every one of you. Let us pray. God, thank you for loving us. And thank you for wanting to protect us. And allow us to allow you to love and to protect us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I will ask you to stand up for our passing of the peace. And so on the count of three today, we are going to say... The peace of the Lord be with you all. So on the count of three, one, two, three. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and may you share that peace with one another while the children go out for children's time.
safe driving trips. But yesterday was another day of epic driving. I drove 850 miles and logged a car time of 13 hours and 30 minutes. We will not talk about how much gas I ended up spending on that trip. <laughs> then I will not recommend driving that far on a spring forward day. <laughs> I drove Bethany over to Richmond, Minnesota so she could grab a ride back to Marshall to finish out her last seven weeks at SMSU. And then I grabbed lunch at Five Guys with Morgan. During our drive, Bethany and I talked about the text. And her words were, I am not sure where you can go with that text. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> the Gospel reading that we heard today is only five verses long. However, there could be a lot there to unpack in many different directions that we could go. I really wrestled with the direction because some of the direction that the preacher could take could get you in a lot of hot water from the individuals who are in the pews listening. Do you take the risk? That is the question. The answer to that question for PJ on this day, I'm not willing to take much of a risk. However, we will dive in to some of those areas where we can and we will go deeper at a later time. Today, we are in the 13th chapter of Luke. Jesus has been traveling to Jerusalem since chapter 9. We are uncertain of all the details and the true motives behind the Pharisees, but they seem to be pushing him to go to Jerusalem a little quicker. Their words start our passage off with a bang. Hear them again. Just then, some Pharisees came up and said, Run for your life. Herod's got your number. He's out to kill you. Jesus, he's not phased through trouble. In fact, we can say that he was courageous and that these words did not retract him from the business at hand. He insists that he is not going to allow anyone to deter him from his work at hand. Let us listen in to the words that Jesus gives to the Pharisees that approach him. Tell that fox that I have no time for him right now. Today and tomorrow, I'm busy clearing out the demons and healing the sick. The third day, I'm wrapping things up. We can clearly see by his response that when he hears about the threats from him, he does not run. He has no intention to hide. Now make no mistake about it. He is not being naive of the possible dangers in front of him, but he understands that he has work to do. The work that Jesus has to do includes casting out demons, curing illness, and there is almost an urgency in the sense of his work. In our Tuesday morning, Bible study. We really focused in on the fact that Jesus was living his life with a sense of purpose and identity. And this led us to converse with one another about our life. And are we living with clarity and purpose? I really like the thought of clarity purpose. And purpose in our lives and then the same for us as a church. I think that it would help us at Bangor if we had a better understanding of 
our true identity. As I got further and further away from Tuesday, I could not get away from Jesus' first words. Go tell that fox. I am not sure if you are aware of it or not, but fox is one of the three metaphors that we see in this brief passage. The other two metaphors are relating to the care of Jesus to a mothering hen, and then the city of Jerusalem to a home. Before I dive too deep into that, let me start by simply giving you two definitions of a fox in the first century. These are definitions that you may be familiar with, but remembering them might help us understand where Jesus is going in this metaphor. In the Greco-Roman world, fox could symbolize deceit and malice, as well as intelligence and strength. Then, the rabbi teaches the word fox is regarded as an unclean pest that should be avoided at all costs. Thus, there's a little bit of hostility in Jesus' response. Yet, there is also compassion in his voice and remarks when he states the following. Jerusalem, <laughs> Jerusalem, killer of prophets, Abusers of the messenger of God. How often I long to gather your children. Gather your children like a hen. Her brood safe under her wings. Even when individuals hate him and want to kill him. And they do not want him to love them. He wants to do the following three things. Love them, give them compassion, and protect them. If we allow it, this passage can be a power play in the season of Lent. Remember, Lent is about our journey to the cross. But we need to remember that Lent is not simply about mourning loss, injustice, and error. It is also about using imagery and symbols that the everyday world uses to communicate our frustration, our fears, and our hopes. <coughs> I'm not sure about you. But when I look around our community and our world, there are many stories that can be lifted from the pages that can bring up frustration and fear. Yet, there is hope. And that is the power in prophecy. We can share and lament on the present, but we can point to the future where there is hope. I want to briefly highlight fear with this sentence. We fear excessively when we allow the avoidance of evil to trump the pursuit of good. If you had not picked up on it, the word of image and symbols can be linked to a metaphor. Remember, we talked about the fact that there are three metaphors in this passage. On Wednesday in 
confirmation, we looked at metaphors as well. However, it was not about this passage. We were looking at Christian maturity and talking about whether we were still on milk for solid food. Metaphoric language can be extremely powerful. The metaphoric language that Jesus used in this passage caused a stir. It shook the audience out of their complacency. And I really believe that we, as a church, as we travel towards the cross, should have our commitment to God's justice and mercy in the world that is strengthened. And this is what the metaphors were dealing with. Hopefully, you heard the word justice. And that word rang a bell for you. We are highlighting our baptismal vows this year. And justice is one of those baptismal vows. The exact vow says the following, strive for justice and peace in all of the earth. If you are keeping track, this is the fourth time that I have highlighted this baptismal vow. But we have not fully dove into the promise, and do we fully understand the promise? And so I want to briefly highlight the definitions of this baptismal promise. Justice means to act or treat fairly, to appreciate properly. Justice involves not only your personal behavior, but how people are treated in society. Peace means to be complete, to be made whole. Peace involves these lifelong relationships with God, with others, and the creation that makes the world whole. So now that we have an understanding of justice and peace, but what about society? Society means how people are organized to live together in a large community. And some of the goals for living together in society includes having the basic necessities of life. Enough to eat, clean water to drink, some place to live, basic health care, education, peace, safety, and freedoms to participate in life. Loving our neighbors includes not only these individual actions, but policies that protect the weak in society from being harmed by the strong. Our baptismal vows, they're some serious business. And this vow is based on a passage from Romans 12. So let us close out with that scripture. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Don't burn out. Keep yourself fuel in a flame. Be alert servants of the master.
inventor in hospitality. Bless your enemies. No cursing under your breath. Laugh with your happy friends when they're happy. Share tears when they're down. Get along with each other. Don't be stuck up. Make friends with nobodies. And don't be that great somebody. Don't hit back. Discover beauty in everyone. And if you've got it in you, get along with everybody. Don't insist. Getting even. That's not for you to do. I'll do the judging, says God. I'll take care of it. So our scriptures tells us that if your enemy is hungry, go buy that person a lunch. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. Your generosity will surprise him with food. And don't let evil get the best of you. Get the best of evil by doing good. May we have the courage to live out our baptismal vow and strive for justice and peace in all.
close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers to the church, the world, and all who are in need. You gather the church into a community of mercy and grace, unify Christians around the globe in efforts to proclaim good news, even in the face of opposition, and to protect those whose lives are imperiled by the gospel. Merciful God, you create the entire universe and call it good. Tender those who would cause further destruction to our planet's fragile ecosystem and augment the calls of those who advocate for thoughtful stewardship of the Earth's resources. Merciful God, you raise up leaders committed to love and justice, nurturing those who govern patience receive criticism, opening to new ideas and courage to change course when needed for the sake of the common good. Merciful God, you hear us when we cry to you, attend to those expecting a child, and console those who have experienced miscarriage. Comfort veterans enduring post-traumatic stress, shield those endangered by domestic violence and uphold those who are ill or grieving. We especially lift up those who are in our community, remembering in our prayers, Paul, Donovan, Mimi, Janet, Kevin, Stephen, Sasha, Fred, Rusty, Carl, Tisha, Michael, Larry, Andrew, Lois, Chuck, Dan, Cletus, Vincent, Sally, Gary, Gordy, Cam, Adele, and the family of Seeds. We also pray for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. Mark, Brad, Faith, Lincoln, Bruce, Griffin, Joe, and Cheryl. And Dave. Merciful God. Kindle faith that moves us in action. Guide children and adults preparing for baptism or confirmation. Empower Sunday school teachers, confirmation leaders, and parents who share their faith with younger generation. Give us all a renewed sense of vocation. Merciful God. You welcome us into your heavenly realm. We give thanks for those whose labors on earth have ended and are now resting with you. On the final day, gather all of us with them in your loving arms. Merciful God. Accept the prayers that we pray, O oh God, on behalf of a world in need. For the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. May we collect our offerings and tithes.
Come among us and feed us with the body and the blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Then, again, after supper, he took the cup, he blessed it, and he gave thanks, saying, This cup is my new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here is food and drink for the journey. Take and be filled. All are welcome.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body and the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life, giving hope to a world in need. Our sending song this morning will be, Our God is here. I'll ask you to rise for our sending blessing and then our sending song. Hear these words. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the glory. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. <laughs> 